Well, Baz, good to see you. The last time we had a, a serious cricket chat was uh, was back in Dubai after the IPL final. I think I did most of the talking that day, talking you through the the events of the final, but it was a good occasion, wasn't it? It was a good occasion. It was very kind of you to take care of most of Dubai's uh, expenditure as well after taking care of us in the final, but it was pretty cool, eh? Like, sort of looking back on that, sort of look at the last four coaches in the in the finals of, of such a big tournament for you guys to obviously win it, for us to get second, Mike Essen's team in there, and then Ricky Pony's four foreign coaches, three of them Kiwis is... It's pretty cool. Nothing new for you, Flemo, but um, but certainly new sort of experience for me. So, well, speaking of fun, did you get a chance to have fun with it? It can be pretty difficult with the, the pressures from above at times, and and then from below, you've got a number of players to look after and a number of egos within those squads. Um, big players who aren't playing. How did you find managing the players? And the, did you get a chance to relax and enjoy the the experience? Well, I did again on the back of your kind of feedback, like just. If, if it's not fun, what are you doing it for, right? Like, yeah, the cash is great, all that, and the opportunity is fantastic, but you've still got to be having fun, and that's, you know, I could put together really good support staff, and we had some great, great guys within the group too, so we had a good time, and I think once I kind of let go a little bit of the determination to succeed, funnily enough, it, it worked out, and I think I probably became a slightly better coach in that time too, and the guys responded, but, yeah, it was fun. Uh, look, I would have been nice to have won the IPL, but if I was going to lose to anyone, mate, it was... You know, lose to my old, my old mate here. Thank you, buddy. Couldn't give it to you too early. So. No. Then after that, though, you decided you're not done with coaching yet. You're stuck of punishment. While I was sunning myself around Abu Dhabi swimming pool, you sauntered off and had a little, uh, little bit of time with the Black Caps on the eve of the T20 World Cup. Yeah, I, I did, and, I, and I've been a big fan, uh, or always be a fan, but a big fan of um, of this Black Cap side and, and this generation of players and. And the opportunity uh, through the MIQ system gave a bit of time to spend uh, a, a week in Dubai to share mainly the um, experiences that we had, the, the pitch conditions which the World Cup was going to be played on and um, anything that we'd learnt from that style of play and, and just give Gary and the coaching staff a bit of information. But it was also, for me, a little bit bigger than that. It was a chance to spend some time with this generation of players yeah, it would have been um, a while too, wouldn't it, since yeah. Yeah, it had been a long time. And um, and I must admit, even getting the, the warm-up shirts back and, and having the silver firm was quite a buzz. So Same I, size from previous years? Yeah, they, they must have changed the sizing because it was a little bit bigger. <laughs> um, but it was it was a great thrill and to spend time with them and see how they operate. And I had a pretty good idea that it was going to be low-key and pretty relaxed, but they were just that and going about their business. And there's some of our greatest players are, are in that side. and. And it was a real privilege to be able to, to to play a small part, but I think I got more out of it than them. I must admit, I was a little bit nervous as well. Um, it, people think it's just easy to flow back in, but it is an environment that I really respect, and um, and I really enjoyed the week and, and the opportunity to to get, to get in there and experience um, some of the success that these guys are having. Was there anything that stood out for you straight away, or yeah, they're good. <laughs> uh, really good. Good in terms of skill or yeah. good in well, terms of an environment? And... I, I think from an environment, it's really low key. And the difference now is I'm only involved and you're only involved in one form of the game, T20, so you can pour everything into that and, and really get to understand that form of the game. One of the challenges around coaching an international side when you're doing all three is to bounce from um, fr from one challenge to the next. So the, the World Cup uh, final disappointment straight into India so having a pro yeah having a program constantly running with different forms of the game and different players I think is a is a real challenge for the modern day coach and player. You think about the player adjusting, but the coaching staff are also are really having to work hard to make sure the players are up to speed for the next challenge ahead, and that can be days rather than weeks and months. I guess I sort of look at this team and I think we've had an opportunity over four years maybe to really celebrate what they've been able to achieve and where they stand, and obviously World Test champions and. Probably talk about that in a little bit too, but T20 World Cup final, you know, one day World Cup final, arguably should have won it. Like they're ticking off some incredible consistency at the highest level. I just wonder is it is it sustainable and doesn't matter if it's sustainable or we're just going through a patch where we should all just sit back and go, what a great era that we're operating in. Well, I'm not sure. Well, since you retired, they've been amazing. <laughs> well, time in your exit's important, right? <laughs> But I think, uh, look, and you won't like me saying this, but a lot of the work was done before that time. I think the, the environment you created, um, and go back to the 42, the, the great 
the great moment really. 45, we were in that bit. Oh, it was a 45, 45. Um, and, and the work done from there has, has possibly set things up um, for what's happening now and, and players have picked up on that. And it's really interesting, you, you talk loosely about legacy, but legacy doesn't necessarily have to be numbers, it's impact and, and shaping and, and developing players within. And if you look at uh, the way some of the IP has been passed down, I, I think um, you played a lot with Kane and, and, and Kane now has a lot of similarities, not necessarily with the way you play, but the way he approaches his players, Ross Taylor, um, around as well. And, and the beauty of this group of players is they've got Tim Southey. There's, there's a lot of experience there that the young players who are coming into this environment are getting a real good understanding of, mm. of what's important to this group. So you talk about longevity of performance. Well, it may, be, it may be just a little blip, but I think we're giving it the best chance because these experienced players are still going well and they're, they're passing down this information and the next group are coming in and performing well. And that's always has to be a great sign that the, the environment's right and the chance of these players emulating their heroes in the team has got to be a lot higher. But well, you mentioned Ross Taylor, and he's obviously retiring after this test match, and BJ Watling's gone yeah. as well, and we've seen how big a hole he's left. Tom Latham well. as well. You're almost guilty of missing out names. There's, there's so many around who are doing well. There is, but then there's a lot who are, who are closer to the end of their career than the start. So what's the transition phase to allow sustainability of success that we've seen? That's, that's a question I, I guess I've got. And I'm sure that's what New Zealand cricket's scratching their heads over as well. How do we sustain what we've built? We can't create generation players through the through the system. They just come every now and then. And we're really lucky at the moment that we've got three, four bolts out there with the ball. Wagner is going to be one. Um, Taylor, Williamson, Latham, uh, Nichols is forging a career. I, I think we are spoilt at the moment. Um, young players coming through, the power of watching the best operate. And we have Williamson as one of the best. I don't know that power. We, Martin Crowe was, was the greatest for me growing up, but never got enough of him. He was injured um, and only got bits and pieces. But what, what I got was still so valuable, what Ross got off the field and taking it forward. But watching um, one of the greats play or playing alongside them is, um, is just one of the, the great learning grounds and, and opportunities that you can be given. So from that point of view, we're in great shape. Um, the next generation still have to prove themselves, and that's going to be a question mark. Do we try and prioritise a form of the game with our best players to allow that real breeding ground to be able to to really sort of start to take care of itself? Or do you just say, you know, well, we're going to go a, a scattergun approach and we'll try and get our best players on the park when they're playing and hope that something drops? Look, uh, 10 years ago, I would have said we've got to concentrate on 15 years ago, one form. Um, one of my dreams was to have uh, split captains at the time. Daniel Vittori, one of our greats, take the one day side and, and um, if possible, I would take the test side because when we would focus just on one format, we were good, but the other format would drop off. I think now we're spoiled in terms of our resource and resource when players are injured, there's players waiting here to come in. I think we have the ability to sustain a, a much higher level in all formats, but it may be naturally that you, you tend to look at World Cups and big events and naturally you just focus a bit more on that. and. Um, and, and the programs that are put in place will, will show you where the priorities will lie for 12 to 18 months. Another World Cup coming up in 12 months for T20. But I think this is by far our best decade or, or era of, um, of talent and skill. So we've got the best chance of being competitive in all formats. How is this team going to deal with losing Ross Taylor? Ross statistically has achieved so much, right? We all, we all know that. We look at all the records that there are, and his name is prevalent in most of them. Well, all of them. To me, it's not necessarily... It's, and I know that statistics are really important to Ross because they were important to his hero, Martin Crow. But to me, it's not... His impact wasn't necessarily statistically. His impact was the ability to be such a rock and a high achiever throughout a period when New Zealand grew from what they were to what they are today. And I'm not even sure if Ross understands that impact himself because I think he, because he was probably a bit more statistically driven. But that's where it's going to be such a, a loss for New Zealand cricket is that he churned out runs for 16, 17, 18 years. Yeah. And he did it in a position which is not easy to do at number four. And he did it all around the world, not just in New Zealand, not just on flat tracks. He did it against the Asia, Australia, like in Asia, against India, against Australia, et cetera, et cetera. And he played 
some sizable knocks and made huge contributions to a team which has learned to be a, uh, one of the top teams in the world, but wasn't always. And I think that's where it's going to be such a big hole in the New Zealand setup. So, yeah, it's going to be a really a period of transition, I think. We've also seen with Kane, you know, he's not necessarily as fit and, and durable as what he once was. So there's going to be times where he's not around the environment too. So there's some guys who are really going to have to stand up, which is why I think Tom Latham's performance in this test match. And I'll be honest, I, I was a bit concerned that maybe leadership, whilst he, he's very good on the field and he seems to carry himself really well, I was a bit concerned that he wasn't going to be able to transition that into his batting because we both know that it can be different. Yeah, batting left hand, top of the order and captaining is definitely not easy, Baz. Well, it sort of wears you down once you get to 50 or 60 as well normally. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's very tiring. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he's put his hand up on this occasion too and I think that's such an important cog in the New Zealand wheel moving forward that now they've got someone as a viable option, particularly if you're going to lose Ross Taylor. See, I'm thinking about the changing room. When I look around, there's a piece of furniture that's been there for for such a long time, when you take it out, you sort of you don't realise the impact of it and all of a sudden you've got to fill it. And we are lucky the Conways are coming through. Will Young, I think, looks an exceptional player and to see Ross as a great um, retiring is a big hole and it's not replaceable. But um, it goes on, as you say, and the, and the players will step up and Latham's example, Conway's example, there will be other heroes come through. Williamson, I think, is important if he can get fit and stay so that you have that staggering of, of great players leaving. You don't want... Um, all your greats to leave at once. So there might have to be a bit of thought around the bowling attack and, and looking forward. So you just have that presence because as a young player looking around seeing Martin Crow sitting beside me or across was a great level of confidence and, and comfort. And, and Ross Taylor would have been that. Well, you look around Hagley Oval and yesterday was almost a full house and people enjoying themselves. Bay Oval was a fantastic crowd. Have you seen the game in better health than what it currently is considering all the challenges which the world's facing and, and society's facing? I, I think they've got the recipe right. The grounds during summer are just now yeah. are perfect. A beautiful career grounds, great to come and watch and spend the day. And and the public now responds to this group because there's been sustained success, not just a little bit here and there, um, which would test the fans' um, commitment. Yeah, sure. But now it is your expectation is so high of this group. And that, oh, they have to carry that and they carry that well. But with that comes the support that we see. And, and it's a great time uh, to be involved in the game. And it's a very proud time to be involved in the game, looking back at um, uh, the history of, of where it's come from and, and what these guys are now mm. achieving. Yeah, I'm pretty proud looking back as well, mate. Like, I know I retired sort of five, six years ago, but the impact that even in a short time I felt I was able to have for you, you must look back at it's even another generation again and look back and, and see just the evolution of the team and just be pretty proud that, you know, you were at the forefront of it too. Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't all easy. Um, uh, there was some huge challenges. There was challenges all the way. This Black Caps team faced one coming back from a, a big defeat in the last test. So we're always going to have to be at our, at our very best. But um, I think that, that's the hallmark of um, the players before me um, the teams for me and, and this group also I know through you and through Kane will pass that on and that's, uh, that's legacy.